Welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Heath, and today we're going to be looking at the journey guide inside of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes for 2023. Whether you're a new player, an old player, or a returning player, we're going to be breaking it down and see what choices we need to be making for 2023. So here we are on my Seagamer76 account. I just recently broke 5 million galactic power on this account. I made a lot of progress inside of the journey guide, but as a new player or a returning player in 2023, the choices inside of the journey guide have been changed and are a little bit different. So we're going to take a look at it today and see what choices that we should make to help us progress inside of the game and help us overall make progress in the game for the coming year. So right here, you can see our inventory and on the left hand side here, we have a character sheet uh, with all of our characters and our squad ships, journey guide, data cron. I am currently working on a specific thing inside of the journey guide, but right now we're going to take a look at squads and it's going to give us some recommendations on some things that we should be working on inside of the journey guide itself. As you can see right here for myself, it is given recommended that I work on galactic legend Jabba or uh, Jedi master Luke or Galactic Legend Ray as well. So it gives us a whole potential list of things that we should be working on or might potentially be working on inside of the game. So as you can go through the list right here, you can see uh, a bunch of different Galactic Legends. We've got Jedi Master Kenobi. We've got Lord Vader. And we've got the Grand Inquisitor. We've got Star Killer. We've got Jedi Knight Luke as well. And we've, we have Ray Jedi Training. So all of these suggestions are things that the game gives us that we could be potentially working on to progress into the game. However, I've got a little bit better recommendations on some things that we should be working on, or at least in my opinion as well, that we should be working on inside of the journey guide. I think that overall will make the progress that much smoother for us in the long run. Now let's take the actual look at the journey guide and we can see what's available. We have our solo journeys, we have our guild journeys, and we have our Galactic Legends as well. And as you can see here, Tier 1 is the beginning of our solo journey, and it goes through Tier 2, Tier 3, Tier 4, all the way down through Tier 5. So as you can see right here, a majority of these things I already have unlocked inside of the solo journey. Then not only that, you have the guild journeys as well, and those are accomplished by doing raids. Uh, we can get Darth Treya shards, we can get General Kenobi shards, we can get Han Solo shards, and most recently we can get third sister shards available in the new rise of the empire territory battle. So we have galactic legends, which is pretty much our ultimate characters inside of the game. As you can see, we have a selection of seven different galactic legends. Jabba the Hutt being the most recent one added to the galactic legend list. But first, before we even get this far, we need to look at the solo journey and decide what we want to do inside of the game, where we want to start, what choices we want to make when we're getting squads, what we want to unlock along the way, which will ultimately lead to us choosing a galactic legend to unlock. So as I was saying, familiarize yourself with the requirements for each one of the tiers. That way, when you choose to unlock a character, whether it be in for Palpatine, whether it be Grandmaster Yoda, that you choose characters that will help you progress inside of each tier. So let's look at Emperor Palpatine, look at the requirements that he has for him, and then we'll make decisions from there to progress to the next tier, to the next tier, and beyond. So right off the bat, you can see that it requires Rebels that are seven-starred to be able to complete the journey for getting Emperor Palpatine unlocked. You can use Classic Rebels, you can use Phoenix Rebels, you can use some of the new Rebel squads as well to get Emperor Palpatine unlocked. So right here is where you make your first decision which rebel group will I use to unlock Emperor Palpatine? So in this case right here, let's just say I want to choose Phoenix. I want to use the Phoenix rebels to get Emperor Palpatine so unlock. So I will take the time to farm the character shards for all of the Phoenix squadron. I will use them to get Emperor Palpatine unlocked. And then once I get him unlocked, we're going to move on to tier two. See what we can do next with the character group that we currently have. So let's just say you use the Phoenix Squadron to unlock Emperor Palpatine. If you look through Tier 2, you can see the requirements for each of the characters. And in this case here, Grand Admiral Thrawn, you are required to use Phoenix Squadron to unlock him as well. So you actually have to fight through waves of Empire troops. So as you go through the different steps to get Grand Admiral Thrawn unlocked, 
by using your fingernail squad and your ultimate goal will be to get him unlocked and get him to seven stars. You actually have to face him in the final encounter and beat him to be able to get him unlocked. Had we chosen a different pathway, we could have gotten R2D2 unlocked. So let's look at the requirements of him really quickly before we move on to tier three. So in the case of R2D2, it requires seven starred Empire Squad to be able to get R2D2 unlocked, which will in turn unlock other characters for us as we go down inside of the journey guide. But since we initially chose to use Phoenix Squadrons to unlock Emperor Palpatine, it got us Grand Admiral Thrawn unlocked. So now we can look through the choices of tier three, see if there are anything that coincide with the squads that we've already decided to upgrade to see if we can progress inside of tier three. So the Chimera is Grand Admiral Thrawn ship. So in this case right here, two required ships are the Ghost and the Phantom that belong to Phoenix Squadron members. Besides those two ships that are required, we can choose any other rebel ship to use in our journey to get the Chimera unlocked. So now that we've moved our way through tier three, we can look at tier four now and do any of the things that we previously did inside of tier three, tier two, and tier one. Do they apply here inside of tier four? Unfortunately, by choosing the Phoenix Squadron to unlock Emperor Palpatine, Grand Admiral Thrawn, and the Chimera, there is nothing inside of tier four that requires these things, except for perhaps using the Chimera to unlock Han Solo's Millennium Falcon. So that jumps us down to tier five. And now we can look inside of tier five and see the requirements are there. So by choosing the Phoenix Squadron to unlock Emperor Palpatine at the beginning, it has pushed us through this pathway to getting Grand Admiral Thrawn unlocked, to getting the Chimera unlocked, and eventually at some point to get the profundity unlocked as well, which by far is one of the best, if not the best ship currently inside of the game. So looking back over the journey guide through the solo journey, we chose to unlock Emperor Palpatine, which led us to Thrawn, which led us all the way to the profundity. And now we're going to look at guild journey and see if it leads us there or into a galactic legend as well. So as I said earlier, we receive shards from the Rancor raids, we get trade shards, we get General Kenobi shards, getting these characters unlocked, getting them upgraded. Well, actually, we can use them in different aspects of the solo journey to progress us towards a Galactic Legend. So let's briefly look over the Galactic Legends that are available to us once we finish our solo journey and get the requirements that are necessary to get them unlocked. So as you see right here, we have a whole list of requirements and prerequisites that are necessary to get Jabba the Hutt unlocked. You can see we have Han Solo, we have Chrysanthemum, we have the Gamorrean Guard, we have the Outrider, we have a bunch of different bounty hunters as well. These are part of the Hut Cartel. We have Skiff Guard Lando, Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. And as you see here, some of the requirements that are done for Jabba the Hutt are actually from the Solo Journey. So when making choices inside of the Solo Journey, we need to take consideration, will this progress me towards a the lightning legend at some point, or will I be stuck farming additional characters that we could have picked up if we chosen a different pathway or a different selection of squads to use inside of the solo journey. I actually have a video recommending Jabba the Hutt as your first galactic legend. It is a long journey, but it will be a worthwhile journey because Jabba currently is one of the best, if not the best galactic legend inside of the game. So I'll leave a link up here at the top for that video if you want to check it out of what Java Hut requirements are and why I recommend him as the first Galactic Legend. But let's get out of Java. Let's look at some of the requirements for some of the other Galactic Legends. And then we'll finish up our discussion today on making choices inside of the Journey Guide for 2023. So let's take a look at Jedi Master Kenobi. Had we chosen or decided that we wanted to have him as our first Galactic Legend, what choices we could have done differently to help us progress towards him as our first GL inside of the game. Here's our full list of requirements for Jedi Master Kenobi. You can see we have General Kenobi, we have the Negotiator, we have Mace Windu, we have Bo-Katan, Qui-Gon Jinn, we have Magna Guard, Clone Sergeant Watt, General Grievous, Cad, and a bunch of other ones as well. But notice here at the bottom, it is a requirement for Jedi Master Kenobi to have Grand Master Yoda unlocked. So in the occurrence here, we chose Emperor Palpatine to unlock first, did not unlock Grand Master Yoda. So now we would have to go back and unlock Grand Master Yoda, get all the requirements done for him, get all the 
Jedi necessary to get Grandmaster Yoda unlocked before we can even progress towards Jedi Master Kenobi. That's why I said it's so very important that you familiarize yourself with the requirements for each of the tiers in the solo journey and familiarize yourself with the Galactic Legend requirements. That way you can make educated choices when you're choosing to unlock characters inside of the game. So since we chose to unlock Emperor Palpatine at the beginning, let's take a look at the Sith Eternal Emperor and see what his prerequisites are to get him unlocked. So here are the prerequisites to get the Sith Eternal Emperor unlocked. One of those being Emperor Palpatine, Darth Vader, the Royal Guard, Admiral Piet, and there's a whole host of different prerequisites that we need to meet to get him unlocked or make our journey into getting him unlocked. One of those being getting Grand Admiral Thrawn upgraded to Relic 6. So if you remember, we decided to use the Phoenix Squadron to get Emperor Palpatine unlocked at the beginning, which in turn allowed us to unlock Grand Admiral Thrawn. So again, making educated choices, choosing characters that will help us progress towards our end goal or our ultimate goal, hopefully, that being having a Galactic Legend. So go through, familiarize yourself with all of the different characters and then decide and make you a game plan. So once you get that game plan made, write it down if you have to, take some notes. I know that seems like a lot, but it will help your progress inside of the game that much better. And it will make it a lot easier for you in the long run if you take the time to really learn about what you're going to be doing inside of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. All right, guys and gals, so here we are. This is our guide for the solo journey, for the guild journey, for our ultimate goal of getting a Galactic Legend. So let me know, are you a new player to Star Wars Galaxy Hero? Are you a returning player? Are you an old player? Have you been playing the game for a long time? What are your current goals inside of the game? And what would you like to see in future videos to help you progress and make progress inside of the game? But anyway, I hope you learned something from this video. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, you know the deal. But anyway, until next time, much love, peace out, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.